Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Semi. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make kids face masks and they're going to have three layers of quilting cotton in them, a filter pocket, and adjustable elastic ear loops so that way you can change the size based on what your kid needs and make it really adjustable. We're going to be using the pattern from Sewing Therapy. This is the same pattern that we use in the first mask video that I did, except we're going to be making it with elastic because that is a little bit easier to get now. And we're going to also be putting the twist tie in so that way we can make a nice bendable moldable nose piece. Um, my pediatrician has seen me in this mask. He sees a lot of people in masks and and he says that this is the best fitting mask pattern that he has seen. So it is a really good one. I'm gonna go ahead and put mine on just so you can see. The bendable nose piece, you can really mold that to fit your face. And this has been washed several times, so it really holds up well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on, put it behind my ears. You can see that it really covers nicely around my nose. I'm able to adjust that. And then it really goes tightly against my chin down here as well. And fits very nicely on the sides of my face. And on the inside, there is that pocket. So I made myself a filter out of a HEPA filter vacuum bag that I put in whenever I'm going outside for that extra layer of protection. And I know that that's a lot of stuff, but I can tell you that I've been to a garden center on a 90 degree day wearing this and with the filter and yeah, it was hot, but it wasn't unbearable. I could absolutely breathe just fine and I felt very safe and very protected. All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about the stuff that you need to do this pattern. We're going to use the sewing therapy pattern, as I mentioned, and we will provide a link to that down below. They are providing this pattern for free. Now, if you are doing it for the adult size, just print it at 100% on your printer at home. If you're doing it for a child, you're gonna to wanna to print it at 85% scale. And when you open up your print settings, that's gonna be an option for you. You can click it and you can go with that from there. You obviously are gonna need some fabric. One half yard of fabric will get you three masks for adults or kids because you have to kind of position it a little bit. And you're gonna need some elastic, obviously. I cut my ear loops for both the adult and the kid to seven inches long. And we are using 0.5 millimeter elastic. It is the thinnest we were able to get our hands on. Um, and we have a lot of, basically everything you can get here, you can get on our website over at shop.quiltatexamus.com. You're gonna need some type of a cord shortener, and we're gonna go over the two that I have here when we get to that portion of the video. We'll also have links to where you can grab those. Um, they'll be an affiliate link to Amazon, or we're trying to get them wholesale to our website. That way you can just have one purchase and get everything you need from there. These binding clips are not necessary, but they are very helpful when it comes to clipping that twist tie into place. Speaking of, these twist ties, that is what bends and creates that moldable nose piece. We have given away almost 400,000 of these for free. So if you are just ordering twist ties, there is a $5.25 shipping and handling fee. We're not making any money on that. It just covers the cost of the shipping, the packaging material, and the time for one of our employees to pack that and get it out the door to you. And some pins are also very helpful. Um, oh, and by the way, these are absolutely completely free if you order anything else from our website. So order a half yard of fabric to make, you know, six, or three masks, and uh, then you would be able to get these for free and it'll just be an add-on to your, your purchase. So buy anything from us, these are free. If you just want the twist size, there is that. Um, shipping and handling fee just to cover our employee time and our packaging costs on that. We're not making any money on the twist ties. Like I said, we've been away 400,000 of them. So I'm so happy that we've been able to help put all those masks on people's faces. We also have created some mask kits for kids. So the girls is going to have these really cute prints that have hearts and two love prints and a unicorn. And this is the one we're gonna be making today. And then we have a boys kit as well with a bunch of blue colors. Right now we just have two. We haven't really been big into kids prints, um, but uh, we have lots that are um, by color. So you can always grab some of those for mask kits. And if you guys like these and we sell out, we will get more kids fabric. Okay, so I know a lot of you guys who are doing this might be 
sewing for the first time or might be using quilting fabric for the first time. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about different types of quilting fabric and different types of fabric that you should be using or even if you're just searching to buy one online that you should be looking for for the material. So there was a study by several different universities and health organizations that was quoted in a New York Times article early on in April that found that quilting cotton, two layers of it, and again, this pattern has three, blocks out 70 to 79% of COVID-19 particles. Now, to give you some context of that, that was the highest performing fabric that you can get and make yourself. And the by comparison, a surgical medical grade surgical mask only blocks 60 to 80%. So you're gonna get about the same um, protection using two layers of high quality quilting cotton as you would if you had medical grade surgical masks. So that's pretty good. And unfortunately we have to mention that because while it would be great if everybody would wear a mask and we could greatly make our reduce the spread and make our, everybody safer, there's gonna be unfortunately people who won't. And so I wanna make sure that I'm using the best material that I can for myself and for my family when I'm making these. And that leads me to not all quilting cotton is made alike. So when you purchase quilting cotton from a quilting retailer like us online or from your local quilt shop, if you can do that safely, you're going to get a better grade quilting cotton than you will if you got it at a big box store or a chain fabric store. They, the prices are lower because they cut corners when it comes to the quality of the fabric. The most important aspect of that from a protective standpoint is the weave is not as tight. So when they weave those fibers together, they do it at a lower thread count than what you get with different quilting cottons. And that thread count, that tightness of that weave is what blocks out more particles. So from a safety standpoint, you really wanna make sure you're getting it from either your local quilting shop or an online quilting retailer that sells quilt shop quality cotton like Quilt Exonymous Us. And also additionally, it's gonna be softer and it's gonna hold up to washes a lot better than what you're gonna get at the chain stores. So it's a yard of quilt shop quality cotton is at most going to cost you $12. And that you can get easily six masks from. So to get six masks for $12, plus some time working on it at home on your home sewing machine, that to me is a good buy and it is worth an extra dollar or two uh, to have that extra protectiveness and to get the more long lasting and to have it feel softer and more comfortable on our face because let's face it, this is not fun. We are doing it because we have to. So with that, I will get off my bubble. Uh, and by the way, if you wanna learn more about this, uh, we had a really long conversation with the president of QT Fabrics, which is a fabric manufacturer that makes quilt shop quality cottons, but they also used to make fabric for chain stores. So he knows very well, he spent 40 years in the fabric industry. So he knows very well the differences between what is done in the chains versus what is done for quilt shop quality cotton and the differences between the two. And we have that video, that conversation is part of our free beginner quilting video tutorial. And you can watch that for free and do the entire quilting tutorial uh, series if you want. And I'll put a link to that in the video description down below. All right, so let's get to actually sewing here now that you know all the stuff you need and why it's important to go with uh, the little bit, this like a dollar or two more expensive quilt shop quality cotton. All right, so I'm gonna just gonna move these guys to the side here and we will take a peek at those a little bit later. All right, so I already said it, but in our last video, we had people ask questions about measurements and things that I said many times, so I'm gonna repeat myself. When you are printing out your templates from the sewing therapy pattern that we use for this, you're going to print it at 85% scale. That is eight, five, 85% scale. And you're going to want to print out three of them because you need one full pattern um, and you need to cut that twice and it's just easiest to have it all so you can lay them all out. And then you need a third one where you're gonna cut off at this line to create your filter pocket. Now you could always skip the filter pocket and just make it a two layer mask, that's up to you, but we're gonna show you how to do it with the pocket here today. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay these out on your fabric. I lay them all out going in one direction. And then a lot of times what I'll do is I will lay out 
I'll print out actually nine of these and cut them out. So two to one ratio of your full pattern to your filter pocket. And then I'll have the other point in the other direction. And then I can get a third layer going in the other direction so I can cut out three total mass per half yard. And that works for children and adults. And as you can see, I have labeled these as child so that I don't accidentally mix them up with my adult versions. All right, so you're gonna cut those out. Again, you're gonna need four total pieces and you wanna, when you cut them, make sure that you are cutting them with the wrong sides of the fabric together. That way when you fold it out like this, you have them going in opposite directions so that when we fold them right sides together to sew, everything is fitting together the way it should. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our piece for our filter pocket. And you might wanna mark, it says real clearly on here, top for the pieces. And I have made so many of these that I can just look at this and tell I know this is the top. Um, but if it's you're new to this, you might just wanna get a little mark, like a chalk marking tool or something to mark the top so you know what is what when you are working with this. All right, so I'm gonna take and I'm going to open this up. I just finished cutting this so that the wrong sides of the fabric are facing up. And I need to put a hem on this because this is what you're gonna be sticking that filter pocket in. The filter, you can either get filter paper or I bought some vacuum bags, HEPA filter vacuum bags and made filters with those. There are lots of options. I'm sure you can find that on the internet, but the vacuum bags worked really well for me. All right, so I'm folding this in about a quarter inch and you don't have to be precise. You can eyeball it if you want. And then I'm gonna fold it over itself again. So I've got two turns so that way my raw edges are tucked down in there and they will not fray as we wash this because it does need to get washed every time that you are done using it. All right, so there's one and let's do two. All right, so now I'm gonna take these to my sewing machine and I'm just gonna sew a quarter inch stitch down the edge of this and I'm gonna have my presser foot, the edge of it in line with the edge of that fold so I can just get this nice and secure down and don't have to worry about that fraying. All right, so I've got that presser foot lined up with the edge of that fold and I'm just gonna stitch down it. You can chain piece these, and for those of you who don't know what that is, what it means is you're just going to lift up your presser foot with your needle down, and you're gonna slide your next piece in, and you wanna give it a little bit of space, and then the feed dogs, which are what's moving the fabric underneath it, will just sort of take it and push it through. It saves you time and a lot of thread. All right, so now I've got this really securely hemmed up. You can see that I've got that stitch line real close to where I fold it over, so that way those threads are not gonna fray and we can use this confidently. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and flip these guys right sides together. And if you wanted, you could pin this, uh, but I find it kind of sticks together pretty well. That's a good quality of cotton, is it kind of likes to stick to itself. So I just flip them over and I'm gonna stitch a quarter inch seam all the way around here. And I'm also going to do that with these here. Now we're gonna have another video coming out pretty soon on what fussy cutting is, if you haven't been aware of that term, but it's essentially to center a motif that you want uh, in the center of something that you're cutting. So I did that with these two unicorns. That way when this will be the outside and it'll be unicorns just, you know, flying through space at uh, my daughter's face. And I know that she'll love that. So you can do that too if you get some really fun, funky fabric that you really wanna showcase what is going on. Uh, you can definitely watch that video and then you can too, you know, showcase your favorite character as opposed to like this one, this was the back of the fabric. I didn't particularly pay attention to where it was. So we're definitely gonna cut off some uh, unicorn hooves there and they're just kind of not centered. So that'll be the inside of the mask. All right, so grabbing one pair at a time, I'm just gonna line up my points at the top and make sure those center curves are nice and even. And then still using that quarter inch seam, keeping that level, I'm just gonna go around there. And you kinda just wanna go slow so you can maintain a uh, nice even seam. You do not need a back stitch at the top or bottom. All right, so I finished that first part. I'm gonna chain stitch this as well with the rest of my center seam. So I'll just grab my next piece, get everything lined up and feed it under and sew.
All right, so I've got my lining, my filter pocket, and my front. And this step you can skip if you are just going to be doing the two layer where it's just the front and the back and no filter pocket. Um, but if you are doing the filter pocket, this is what you're gonna do. With the top sides all facing up, and make sure you match those up, I'm going to move the seam of my filter pocket to one side. Doesn't matter what side, just pick A side. And then I'm going to take my inner lining fabric and I'm going to move it so the seam is going in the opposite direction. So you see I've got my filter pocket going to my right and my uh, lining going to my left. So I'm gonna lock those seams, match them right up just like that. You can see that. Then I'm gonna take a pin and I'm gonna put it in the right side of that seam just to sort of keep those guys together. And then I kind of walk my fingers over to make sure that this is nice and lined up because your filter pocket is not going to go all the way to the edge because obviously you need it to be free so you can slide some sort of filter material inside. All right, so now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now we're gonna flip it around to the bottom. So I'm gonna pay attention to where I was folding seams. So in this side, the uh, filter pocket was going to my left. So I wanted to also go to the left here. That way the seams are going in the same direction and it just lays a little bit nicer that way. All right, so I've got those seams nice and locked. You can go ahead and pin and then repeat that process of just securing these guys in place here. All right, so that is what it should look like. I've got to turn it so the top side is up. Uh, there are inner lining. So you've got your lining and then you have your filter pocket here and then we have the top. And you can kind of tell when you're doing this what the top is because if you kind of pull it out like this, the bottom goes straight and the top part is curved so that it will fit over your nose. So now it's time to add our outside that you're gonna see when you are wearing the mask. So if, again, if you were not doing the filter pocket, you would just line it right sides together with your lining and you could call it a day. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and flip this so that way I'm putting the right side of my outer fabric to the inside of my lining here because when we flip it all around, it's gonna go right sides together. Now, if you are skipping the filter pocket, you're gonna do that locking seam thing that I showed you, but because we've already done it, and we have our one seam going, our outer seam going to the left here, and then the seam, next seam goes to the right. I want this one to go to the left so that it will lock with the seam that's directly beneath it. And then once I have that nice and lined up, I'm just gonna go ahead and take out my pin and put it right back in to secure everything. And you know that you are matching your top ends because this should be the same length. If it is not the same length, then you have put a top to a bottom or vice versa. All right, so now that I've got those corners together, I'm gonna go ahead and put a pin in there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pinch this where my pocket is. And I'm just going to pin through all of those layers just to keep everything nice and secure so that way you don't miss anything when you're sewing it all through. And I'm gonna repeat with the rest of the four corners doing the same process for all of them. All right, at this point I like to turn it so that it's facing out. You can already see this mask is really great shape. It's not gonna be tight against your nose or your mouth because it already has that great padded area in it and it is holding its shape even without anything in it, no extra nose piece at this point. Now, I know that a lot of people when we started making masks are like, oh, don't use pins because it makes holes in the fabric and the virus can get through. Well, when you wash fabric, it kind of heals itself. So the first thing you wanna do when you finish this is you're going to want to throw it in the wash anyway. Those fabrics will come back together and you should be okay. But again, the reason why we're wearing masks is to protect us from getting our spit on other people. It happens when we talk, it's normal, it is what it is, uh, but right now it can be dangerous. So for the most part, we're doing this to protect other people. But again, make sure you're using the best materials you can so that you're also protecting yourself when you encounter those people who are not wearing masks for 
whatever reason they choose to not wear a mask. All right, so at this point, we're gonna sew all the way down one side, then we're gonna flip it around, and we're gonna sew all the way around the other side. We're gonna leave our edges open because that's where we're going to turn and eventually put our elastic into. And I'm gonna make sure to reinforce my stitches at the top and the bottom of each side because we're gonna turn that around. That puts some stress on the seam. You don't wanna rip that open. So we're just gonna sew back and forth a couple of times when we do that to make sure that it is good and secure. All right, I always pull the pins out before I sew to them. Usually I pull that first one out as soon as I have it secured underneath that presser foot. I'm gonna sew forward a couple times, then I'm gonna just, just stitch in place. And then I'm just gonna keep going, making sure to pull those pins out as I go. When I get to the center, I want to really kind of smush this down so you guys can see. I kind of hold my finger over that seam so I can kind of keep everything together. And I kind of get everything nice and realigned when I go around that curve. And then just keep pulling the pins before you come to them. If you sew over a pin, you can break a needle. That can be a little scary. All right, when you get to the edge, go ahead and make sure you're reinforcing those stitches. And then you can chain piece these if you're making several. You can do all of one side at a time and then go around and do all the other side. All right, so I'm just gonna repeat that entire step just on the other side. Keep in mind that one side is going to be curvier than another, so if you are having more trouble with one side than another, you're probably on the curvier side. So this part is definitely more challenging on a child size version than it is on an adult because what we're going to do is we're gonna turn it inside out from this side. And we're talking about maybe an inch and a half opening at this point. And so it is just, you know, you gotta be careful. You don't wanna rip those seams open. So I just kinda of open it a little bit and get a pointer finger in there. And then I just want to use my thumb to push out fabric from both sides gently because we don't wanna pop those seams. That's why we reinforce both edges. And then you just wanna keep kind of pushing the fabric through a little bit at a time. And then eventually it pops through like that. And I can grab my other end and pull it out. So now it's starting to look like something. We can kind of push it out and get it reshaped. And we can see that we have our nice filter pocket right here where we can put filter paper in or vacuum filters like I've used. And then you've got a clear right side and a clear wrong side. Now the edge that you pulled everything through is going to be a little bit wider just from stressing it like that. It's okay. Um, it doesn't affect the quality of the mask because we're gonna fold that in. And now it's super wrinkled. So we're gonna give this a press to get some nice crisp seams. So this is my absolute favorite non-quilting quilting tool. It is an aerosol sprayer that's meant for hairstylists. It turns any liquid into an aerosol spray. So you can mist and not get water droplets all over everything. And it dries really fast that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to use my fingernails to push those seams out as far as I can, working with one half of the mask at a time. Then I'm gonna give it a spritz with my spray there. I also like using water at this step because then you don't have any scents because that can be irritating to have that right next to your skin and have to breathe that in all the time. So anything you can do to reduce that, I think it's good. All right, so I've got that pretty flat there. So now we're going to repeat. Obviously this looks, this looks hot mess and this looks very crisp. So we're gonna do that on the other side as well. Once I finish that, I'd like to give it one more press, just flatten it out nicely. Now it's looking like a, a cool little mass. We've got our little unicorn flying through there. And I'm just gonna give it a little press to get the wrinkles out. All right, so that is looking good. It is looking like a mass now. We can see that it has that straight bottom and then the curved top for the nose. So now we're gonna put in our nose piece so that way we can mold and shape that to fit their little noses. And that is especially important, I feel like, in kids because depending on how large your kid is, like this is meant to fit like a three to 10 year old. So depending, my six year old is small and so it can sit a little high on her face. And so if you didn't have that moldable nose piece, it would really be in her eyes. But because I can mold it, we're able to push it down a little bit further on her nose so that way it still covers her breathing, but it's not bothering her eyes. So 
don't skip this step. And like I said, the twist ties are totally free to add any order. You can add up to 200 to your any order and you can get those and um, make as many as you want. We've had a lot of people order um, lots and we've given away uh, almost 400,000 of them. So that's great. You guys have done great work with on the mass front through these. Totally just realized that I used the cut and press that my daughter did some painting on. So you know I have kids because everything is stained funny colors. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this twist tie and I'm just gonna fold it in half. And so that way my two ends are together. And then I'm gonna unfold it a little bit, but I'll be able to feel where this fold is when I put it inside my mask. So making sure to work from the nose end, again, if you open it up, because you don't want to put it to your face because that'll get your germs on it. But if you open it up like this, the bottom part, it looks nice and flat and the top part is curved. So what I do is I stick my finger in through the filter pocket. And if you skip that, you would be sticking it in in between where you turned it all open. And I pull that out some. Then grasping the middle part where I folded it in half, I'm gonna put that in and I'm going to position it, and this is gonna be hard to show on camera because it is a feel thing, but I'm just kind of moving it around inside there until I can feel that that part that I bent is nice and even with that center seam right there. Then this is where I take this clip, and I'm just going to clip over that to hold it in place. Now when I feel this, I can feel that one end is right up next by the seam, and this end here is, is poking down a little bit. So what I do here is I will grasp that and push it up as far into that seam as I can, and then I'm gonna take a little pin and I'm gonna put it in right outside where I can feel where that ends. So I can feel that it ends right there. I've got the, seam, the pin right beyond that, and then I'm gonna go ahead and push this one up and this will help hold everything in place until we can get that stitched down and held in place. All right, so now I'm ready to sew this. Again, I like to sew it so that the outer edge is facing up and I'm going to zigzag stitch along the top. You can zigzag right over top of that twist tie. It's metal encased in plastic, so it washes really well. I've washed mine a bunch of times and it's still holding up, it still bends really well. And then the bottom edge, I'm just gonna do a quarter inch seam. That zigzag takes up more thread, so I wanna conserve it and only use it where I absolutely have to, and that's going over that twist tie, and then also when we add the elastic at the very end. All right, so I've set my machine just to a standard zigzag stitch, the one that's going back and forth, not like, looks like a lightning bolt. And I, just if you guys are doing this at home, my stitch length is 1.4 and my stitch width is 3.5. So if you are trying to mimic what I'm doing, that's the setting and you wanna go from there. All right, so I'm just going to line this up. Again, I don't backstitch at the beginning or end of this because we're going to fold this over yet so it won't be a raw edge. All right, so I'm just stitching along here. And when I start to see that I'm coming to my pin, I like to slow down a little bit because I know that I'm gonna start sewing over that twist tie. And for the most part, I only one time have hit it and had my thread break. But you kind of want to try to sew over, you're going zigzagging stitches over the twist tie rather than straight through because that might bust your needle or thread. So I do pull that uh, clip off a little early because obviously you you know it's in the way of the presser foot. But I just kind of push this side of the mask down as much as I can to keep it nice and flat as I'm going through. And I can see my second pin, so I know I'm getting to the end of that twist tie. And then I can speed up till the end. Now, if you're making a bunch of these, so you're making, you know, five for each kid so that they all have one for each day of school. You can absolutely, and I recommend that you chain piece and do all these steps for all the masks all at once. It will save you a ton of time than making one mass individually. So what you would do is you would just lift this up and you would start feeding in the next one. I believe that our clips come in packs of 20, so that is a good number to do. It's You can do it in about two days um, if you are working about eight hours each day and you can really get a lot done that way. So I'm just doing one, so I'm just gonna go ahead and stop there. And then I'm gonna switch my sewing needle back to that quarter inch stitch so I can top stitch over the bottom. All right, so we can see we've got that zigzag. It is looking pretty neat. And we can see that multiple nose piece is doing its job. So now I'm going to stitch along this bottom with that quarter inch seam. All 
When you get to the bottom here, it's really nice to kind of give this a pull and get it nice and straight. And then just kind of flatten down the mask. That way you don't get any bunch thread there or fabric. All right, so we are now in the home stretch. We've got our mask together except for the elastic. It's looking really nice. It's holding its shape really well. This is, I'm just laying it down and you can see there's a lot of dimension to it. Uh, it is holding its shape and it will hold its shape like this over your kid's mouth and over your mouth if you're making the adult size, giving you lots of breathing room so that it is as comfortable as a mask can be. All right, so at this point you have to make a decision. So we are either going to do a tie like this where you have a toggle where there are two ends for an in and out because you have to attach this toggle before you sew your elastic on or you can do a cord stopper these go on after the fact and they can be removed so we can pull that off at any time and take it off um, so there's two kind of schools of thought here as i was making this this one is not going to come off ever so there's no chance of your kid losing it like you know the one last glove and but it is pretty bulky and so i made sure when i was sewing this and i'll show you guys how to do it that the flat side is going to be against their head so that way this bump doesn't you know cause some irritation but you can definitely slide that around and position your size and change it up as at will but again it is it's pretty large and they're a little bit more expensive these guys um, they're pretty inexpensive. They are real easy to put on after the fact. So if you already got a mask that isn't fitting quite right, this might be able to help you get that to fit your kids. And originally when I was making masks, I did all the kids ones with ties because I could not get the elastic to fit each individual kid without physically seeing each individual kid, which I can't do right now because my nieces and nephews, you know, it's hard to visit them safely. So this is a great solution because you can customize it. It's a lower profile, it's nice and soft, so it shouldn't irritate their ears or anything. But again, it can pop off so they can lose it. Um, but it does hold on really well. Like I have one here on there and look how far I can stretch that and it is not budging. So it is pretty sturdy once it's on there, it's on there, but you can move it and adjust it. And so you could lose them. And if you have little ones in your house that might eat these, that is something you need to think about too. Um, I know we do, we have a five month old who puts everything in her mouth, so we don't want that. All right, so I'll show you real quick how to put this one on because it's super easy. And then we will move on to doing the elastic with the toggle. All right, so I took a twist tie and I just folded it in half like that. And you want it to be pretty, pretty flat in half. And you could still use this um, in a mass later. And what you're gonna do is you're just going to put your elastic in between that and then these guys have a fat side and a really skinny side. And you want to put your twist tie in through that fat side and it will feed out through that skinny side. Give it a little tug and it will pop right over that. And then you can remove your twist tie and then you can adjust it however you need in order to make it fit your kid. So that is a definitely a very good option. Like I said, you can get these and they're much less expensive than the toggles. Um, do not iron them and do not iron your elastic or you can melt them, but you can and I think should iron your fabric because it makes it look so much nicer when it comes out of the wash. So that's these, pretty simple, pretty easy. You're gonna install the elastic the same way I'm about to show you. But if you're going to do the toggle, then we need to get that the elastic fed through that before we attach it. All right, so I have two pieces of seven inch wide elastic. And I'm gonna say that again because a lot of people miss the measurement in the first one. This is seven inch piece of elastic. You're gonna use the same size for an adult mask, but with the kids, you wanna make sure you have something that you can adjust it with, either that slider or the toggle. And for this one, I also, it's 0.5 millimeter elastic. It's about a quarter inch, a little bit less than a quarter inch wide. And it does fit nicely behind the ears and it doesn't um, get too annoying to wear for several hours. Cause I wore mine for several hours and it works fine. All right, so we're gonna take our twist tie again that's been folded in half. And I'm going to slide my elastic in that and sort of give myself a little tail here. Then I'm going to take my toggle and I'm going to push it down because you don't want it to be underneath the spring. You want it to be going over the spring. Then I'm going to feed my twist tie through and pinching that, go ahead and pull it through. 
So now I've got it on here and I cannot move this toggle. I cannot move it on there because it is in place. So that is the easiest way to get it through, I found, is to use that twist tie. So now I'm going to do the same thing going back through the other one and you wanna make sure that you don't twist it when you're going through. Otherwise it's going to be twisted forever because remember once this is on, it's on. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and grab this. I've got it around there. I've got my tiny little tail there. I'm going to feed it in, making sure I'm not twisting. Put my twist tie through and pull. All right, so I've got that centered on there and I'm gonna go ahead and pull it all the way out. That'll make sure that I don't have a twist and it also will make sure that I've got more room to work when I'm attaching my elastic. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this again with the other one so that I have both toggles on and ready to sew on. All right, so I'm gonna use my spray mister to just give that a little bit of spray at the edge. It'll help you hold your fold down. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold that in and then in again about a quarter inch each time, just like when we were doing our hem right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and press that with the iron and that water is going to help hold that crease in so we don't have to mess with it too much when we are pinning and getting that in. Now I find it is easiest to attach it at this point. Now remember, this is going to be the inside of the face. So we wanna make sure that we have the flat side of our toggle facing up when we do this. And being careful not to twist your elastic, I just sort of stick it in there and I maybe overlap it about a half an inch or so. And then I fold that inside there. Now I'm gonna secure this with a pin and do the same thing to the other side. This one you can't unfold all the way because you already have your pin there, but you can sort of stick your elastic in and fold it back over and give it a pin again. When you're pinning, make sure you're pinning through the elastic and then out. And this is just to keep it in place until we can start sewing it. We're gonna repeat with the other side. And again, I recommend that if you're doing a bunch of these that you do a, this entire step and then you can zigzag through them all and get them all done and give your final press. All right, so I've got my sewing machine back on the zigzag setting. It's the one that goes back and forth, not like a little lightning bolt. And again, that stitch length is 1.4 and the stitch width is 3.5. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to just stitch, I'm gonna start right up at the top here and I'm going to stitch back and forth twice at the top and three times at the bottom. And the reason why I do twice at the top is because my feet dogs have a hard time grabbing it and going to start with. So that's really ends up a lot denser and I don't feel like I need to go over it as much as I do on the bottom where they've kind of got their groove and they're doing a little better. But you definitely wanna make sure you're going over that. One, to lock your stitches in place and two, to make sure that elastic doesn't pop off with use and washing. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop that under. We're gonna sew from here down to here. All right, so once I like the way this is positioned underneath the sewing machine, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that out. So I really like these flower head pins. They are really easy to just grab because they're super flat. You can just sort of grab it with your thumbnail and move it out of the way. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stitch back and forth. And I can see already that that is super tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and reverse one time all the way to the back and then I'm gonna get going again so down now I'm about halfway through I'm either gonna sew over my pin or I'm gonna remove it so I'm gonna remove it but I want to keep my finger over this section to kind of hold that elastic in place right I'm getting down to the end now I'm gonna slow down I'm gonna sew right to the edge and then I'm gonna stitch back one time, forward two, back three, and then when I hit the end, I'm gonna go ahead and cut those threads. It's looking pretty good. We're gonna have to uh, pull, cut those threads in a second, but you can see it is really densely stitched in there. It really is it's on there good. It is not going anywhere. I'm gonna repeat on the other side, and then we will try it on my daughter. You guys can see how well it fits. All 
right, so here we go. We've got our mask. It is really easy to adjust these toggles. I can just kind of pinch it, pinch that together and give it a pull and make it the straps longer or shorter. The nose bridge is really nice because you can mold that to their face and make sure it's not sitting too up high on there. And then of course we've got that filter pocket where you can put in some filter paper. Um, you can buy that online now. People have used coffee filters. I use a vacuum bag that I just Lysol in between uses. Um, again, this is not, this is to protect other people. I know that you probably know that if you've gotten this far down the video, but unfortunately there are a lot of people who are not wearing masks right now. So whatever you can do to protect yourself um, and use the best quality materials you have available to you and you can afford, I would recommend doing it, um, especially as kids go back to school. I know that it's not affecting kids as much as adults, but it can be very serious for them and then they can bring it to other people who it will affect more. So we wanna make sure we're careful. Use that high quality quilt shop fabric and that is going to be softer, so it'll be better to wear. It's going to hold up longer in the washes, so you won't have to replace it as quickly and also it is a tighter weave of fabric than what you're going to get at the chain stores so it's going to block more of those particles that you don't want to get and again there were some studies that found that it was between 70 and 78 percent of blockage and that was compared to a medical grade surgical mask which blocked between 60 and 80 percent so this is as good as you can get for a home sewn mask. And when you are shopping for masks, I would make sure you are checking that out as well. Um, I saw one that is, I've been very heavily advertised on my Facebook feed, and I went to check out what it was made from, and the outer layer is cotton, but the inside is a cotton poly blend, and polyester is not natural fiber, so it's not gonna breathe as well, which is very important if you have something on your face. It's gonna be hot, it's gonna be harder to breathe through. So make sure you're going with that natural, quilt shop quality cotton, T-shirts are better than nothing, but they are not as good because the knit fabric and the thing that makes it stretchy also allows more things to come through. So do the best with what you have. But again, you can make six of these from one yard of fabric, and that is about 10 to $12 from a quilt shop. So you can get a lot and you can actually get a better deal than having than ordering them elsewhere. And we have kits available for these. We have matched up um, four half yard fabric, so you'll be able to make a dozen, either for adults or kids from that. And that is available at shop.quiltaddictsnomis.com. It comes with the elastic. It does not come with these ties or the toggles or the cord shorteners. Um, right now, we don't have those available for wholesale, but I am gonna put a link to where you can get them both on our website and on uh, this video description. So you can check that out in the link down below. Um, if we are able to get them on our website, we will because we want you guys to be able to have a nice, easy shopping experience. You can get everything all in one place. Um, and you also will get the twist ties and again, you can order up to 200 of those and get them for absolutely free with any purchase. If you're just ordering twist ties, it's a $5.25 shipping and handling fee that just covers the time for one of our employees to pack them up and the materials that we pack them up and the postage to get them to you. Um, we're not making any money on that. We've given away 400,000 almost and we just want to help mask the United States because we need it right now. So be safe, keep your kids safe. And you know, this, this sucks, you know, I want to go see my, my family and, and we haven't yet. And, but when we do, we'll have some really cute masks. And if your kid is going back to school soon or daycare, this is a good thing to have. You can get them excited about it by making it in some fun prints and colors that they might like their favorite colors and make sure you're doing one for every day of the week that they might be out. So that way you don't have to do laundry more than once a week, because let's face it, no one has time for that. So again, everything you need for this over at our website, shop.quiltaddictsanomis.com. We've got links to everything in the video tutorial um, description down below. And until next time, happy quilting and happy mask making. Dad was watching and we had blue candy while this was going on. <laughs> Are you ready to try on your mask? See how it fits? I can. Okay, you want to put it on? I'm completely blue. You are completely blue. Do you want to put it on? Put it on. I know, you still have a blue tongue. That's fine. I washed the blue off my face. He said he didn't do it off my lips and my tongue. All right, let's mold that to your nose. <laughs> I love it. All right, you ready? 
I will be. Can we say happy quilting? Happy quilting. Happy quilting, everyone. Stay safe.